I'm joined by John Fury, a Republican strategist, and Cornell Belcher, a Democratic pollster and MSNBC political analyst. Well, you know, Corker's not exactly a bomb thrower, and he's out comparing this guy to James Jones and drinking the Kool-Aid and cults, and that's pretty uh, pretty deep. I don't think that... Uh, but you don't think it's true? Well, listen, I think that upsetting the Trump voter, not necessarily the president, but the Trump voter, is bad politics. I mean the bear? The bear, He's talking about the bear. The bear is the Trump, the Trump voter. Oh, really? Sanford, you know, it's easy to complain when you're leaving or, or oh, that's get on, what, that's get on your point. soapbox. That's the point. That's, that's the easiest thing to do. The hardest thing to do is to run again and compete and, and win these voters and actually appeal to them on, on the issues they care about. And what they care about are jobs. They care about national security. They care about rising uh, wages. Right. And they care about immigration. And, uh, they, uh, you know, the, the Mr. Corker is leaving and, you know, some, no one cares what he's saying. Well, you're but making this point, uh, Cornell. I think John just made the quote. The only guys free to speak their minds are the ones leaving. Right. Well, look, there is something different about this 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 president. What we're seeing that certainly certainly Bush didn't hold the base of the Republican Party this way. And, and and as someone who worked for Barack Obama, let me tell you, he certainly didn't hold the base of the Democratic Party this way. There is something very different that, that that's that's going on here. And I mean, he said it himself. Trump said, "I can stand in the middle of Times Square and shoot someone. I wouldn't lose any support." So there is something textually different from what for, with Trump than what I think we stole from Bush and Obama. But the question for me becomes, can you be the party of Trump? And I think Speaker Boehner has got it right. You know, this is Trump's party now. Can you be the party of Trump and also be the party of, of middle America? Yes, you can do very well in these in these primaries, but I can tell you right now, the Republican they nominated to take on uh, to take on Virginia is way out of line with Virginia. And I think... You, is he still a birther? <laughs> well, aren't you, once a birther, aren't you always a birther? Well, I think right. Trump switched. I, I, think if you look at Corey, I, I think if you look at Corey Stewart, he had pretty big name ID, and the guys he ran against, no one had, had heard of before. So yeah. that, that actually helps. Can you run in the Republican Party this November without Trump's blessing? I think it's awfully difficult to run against Trump uh, in any way and win anything in the Republican Party. You're proud of this party? I, listen, I, this is the party. Are you proud of this party? I, what I'm proud of is very low well, unemployment. I'm proud of. Are you proud of your party? I, I'm always proud of my party. I think, I, I think my party. <laughs> my party, Roy, right I think or my wrong? Is, I think my party is representing its voters very effectively. But what? But what? But what's the party, right? Is this the party of, 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 of Bush and Reagan, or is this now the party of Trump? And I think, and by the way, and listen, I, I don't have okay, a Okay, I've never seen anything like know, this. Your party. It was good on trade. It was a free trade party. It was good on deficits. It was always for wait, a wait, part wait. of fiscal responsibility. Trump just comes in and changes all the rules, and you guys say yes, sir. And law and order. You, you guys say yes, sir. You Listen, say yes, sir. Are you proud of that? I, th I think that the evolution, it's a heel -clicking the evolution party. of trade has been pretty substantial over the last 20 years. Look at what Rob Portman did. He was USTR trade ambassador. When he ran for re-election before Trump, yeah. he talked about steel. He talked about the importance of steel. You just steel. told me that anything Trump wants, he gets. Well, I think right now he's he is well, that's extremely not exactly popular. Principle. He's extremely Where's popular. Where's the principle? And I'll he's do extremely, anything the boss tells me to do. He's extremely. Where's popular the principle in, in that? Days. There's no principle there. Anyway, during his concession speech, Congressman Sanford, who's looking pretty good, actually defended his past positions, like down in uh, Buenos Aires. Let's watch. <laughs> <laughs> There's been too much made of, are you for one personality or against it? What we're about as a nation is not being for or against one personality. Again, we're a nation of laws and not men, as the Founding Fathers said. And I stand by that belief, though in this case it may have had significant electoral consequence. Yeah, he lost the primary. He's not going to be a congressman anymore. Sanford's opponent, by the way, Kate Arrington, had back Senator Marco Rubio during the 2016 presidential election. Last night, however, she declared the Republican Party of Trump while attacking Democrats who stand in the president's way. Here she is. They believe in higher taxes, bigger government, fewer jobs, and that's the problem. Yeah. It's not. It's the job of Washington to fix it. We are the party of President Donald J. Trump. Wow, there it is. Well, there's no doubt about it. <laughs> I mean, if you look at these primaries, but also you, you look at the all the popularity ratings, Trump has about 90% uh, approval rating with the Republicans, which yeah. is a pretty high. Right? I think right the right only now, guys yeah, taking on the spot. president right now are going to be Michael Flynn, probably Manafort, and probably Cohen. I don't think they're going to take on the uh, president. Anyway, we'll see. Thank you, Ferry, for being in the barrel one more time. Thank you, Cornell Belcher. As I mentioned earlier, Virginia was one of the five states to hold a primary last night. And come the midterm elections, the state is expected to host one of the most closely watched congressional races in the country. 
Last night, Democratic State Senator Jennifer Wexton beat out five other candidates for the right to take on Republican Congresswoman Barbara Comstock in Virginia's 10th Congressional District. Comstock, of course, is viewed as one of the country's most vulnerable House Republicans and one of the toughest incumbents. Hillary Clinton won that district by 10 points during the 2016 election. If Democrats have any hope to pick back the House, the path goes through directly through the 10th District in Virginia. For more, I'm joined by State Senator Jennifer Wexton, who won 42 percent. Very powerful, Senator. Thank you for uh, coming on tonight. Uh, let's talk about you and Barbara Comstock. Comstock is one of these tough incumbents. They, they see, they're survivors. How are you going to knock her out? Well, I have deep roots in the district and a record of, of winning tough elections and then delivering for my constituents once I'm elected. Um, I think those things really resonate in the district. Barbara also is out of touch. You know, she, she, uh, she says one thing and does another. She represents How about guns? A... Talk about your guns difference. Absolutely. I mean, that's a big area of contrast. Barbara Comstock is a, has an A rating from the NRA. She's one of the top recipients of money from them, despite having been in Congress for only a short time. I, on the other hand, have been fighting for gun safety legislation in Richmond for years. And I'm going to continue to do that. Okay, on what the about trail immigration? Talk differences. What's the difference in you and the incumbent Republican? You have to beat this November on immigration. What's the difference? Well, we, we live here in Virginia 10 in a very diverse district. We have a big Muslim population. And Barbara Comstock was silent when, when Donald Trump uh, started the Muslim ban. Uh, we have a big international airport, Dulles Airport, in our district. I was there along with many members of Congress, other elected officials, and hundreds of, of, of people from the district um, protesting and lawyers. And Barbara, not a peep. Um, what about this MS-13 thing that Trump keeps talking about? MS-13, the gang from Latin America, is that a danger that you're not facing up to? Let's talk about it. Republicans want to equate MS-13 and immigration. They want to conflate those issues. They did it sure. in 2017 in our statewide elections, and it failed miserably. Voters are start smarter than that, and they really don't respond well to this race-baiting and fear-mongering. I think what's really important are things like the fact that Barbara Comstock is refusing to sign on to the discharge petition for DACA protections. Yeah. You know, she is, and, and rather than take a stand on something, she stands for nothing. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.